what's up guys? Today, I'll show you an American thriller horror film, Boarding School. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with Jacob, a 12-year-old boy, trying to cover the mirror before hitting bed. He uses anything he can get his hands on to ensure that the mirror is adequately covered. Jacob also tries to keep the door slightly open as he fears the dark, but Jacob's mother asks him to make sure that the lights are off and keep the door closed. Uncomfortable with the setting, Jacob can only hope that there won't be nightmares this time. Moments later, Jacob screams at the top of his lungs after having a nightmare. This has been going on almost every night. The mother runs to Jacob's room to wake him and expresses her frustration that she couldn't take the nightly disturbance. But then Jacob's stepdad calms her down and comforts her. The stepdad is about to talk with Jacob when he notices that Jacob pee on the bed. And so, they continue talking in the bathroom where the stepdad asks Jacob to apologize to his mother. Despite being Jacob's stepdad, the man tries to be Jacob's friend and treats him well. The stepdad then explains that he loves his mom, which also upsets him to see her like that. In an effort to reconcile, Jacob then goes to his mother's room to say sorry. But his mother is meditating to calm her nerves, and Jacob is unsure if she hears him. Early the next day, Jacob hears his mother crying and goes out of his room to see what caused this. The stepdad then explains that the mother is crying because Jacob's grandmother died. Although Jacob's mother is crying, she expresses that the grandmother is better off dead because she's a horrible person. Jacob never knew his grandmother because his mother purposely never wanted them to meet. Later, they then go to the cemetery and bury her. While waiting for the Jewish ceremony to be over, Jacob is approached by a freaky old lady who introduces herself as a friend of his grandmother. The freaky old lady shows her woos from her hands and tells him that a Nazi soldier would mark her every time she got raped. She also admits that she has scars all over her body. The old lady then adds that Jacob's grandmother would use her nail file to sharpen her teeth as a weapon. This gives Jacob the chills. The mother then interrupts the old lady and takes Jacob away. Back home, mother explains that the old woman is crazy before leaving with stepdad to watch a musical. The mother then asks Jacob to finish the book he's reading and not watch TV. She believes watching TV and reading comics trigger Jacob's fear of the dark and nightly episodes. Jacob is now left alone. He then turns on the TV and watches a horror movie from Daniel CC Movie Channel, despite his mother's wishes. On a different evening, the family visit the stepdad's boss and his family, where he meets a new friend named Christine. During dinner, Christine, also 12 years old, shows disapproval towards her stepmother. Christine and Jacob are then instructed to go up in the room while the adults talk. While alone in a room, Christine keeps teasing Jacob that he's pretty. Jacob does not like to be called pretty. He believes that the term is only for girls. Jacob prefers to be called muscular and handsome, but she is persistent. Jacob then asks who owns the comics he's reading. Christine shares that it belonged to her late brother, but then changes the topic when Christine wants Jacob to make a move on her. But suddenly, Jacob's mother comes in. Back at his school, when the bullies find one piece of glove for women in his bag, Jacob is beaten up. When Jacob gets home, his mom blames reading comics and watching Daniel CC channel as the reason why he gets into trouble. For some reason, he gets suspended from school despite being the victim of bullying. The next day, Jacob is alone in the house because his mother and stepdad have work. While preparing his meal, Jacob hears a loud noise. He goes to the living room and discovers that a flower base has been knocked down. He also sees the belongings of his grandmother, who recently passed away. He listens to some music and goes on to try on the dresses of his grandmother. He then dances to the music. Unbeknownst to him, his stepfather comes home early and sees everything he does. Stepdad then decides that Jacob needs help. On a different occasion, Stepdad informs Jacob that he'll keep the weird dancing incident a secret as they walk towards an office. Stepdad then introduces Jacob to Dr. Sherman, the principal of the supposed special boarding school, that Jacob will be attending. Jacob is not interested, but he knows he has no other choice. The family then takes a long drive until they arrive at the boarding school, where they are welcomed by Mrs. Sherman, the doctor's wife. While settling in, Jacob asks why there are two beds in his room. Mrs. Sherman then explains that he has a roommate on his way. He's also told that he will meet his classmates in the morning. Before going to bed, Jacob asks permission to keep the light on. Jacob's sleep is cut short when he notices another person in the room. When he wakes up, he sees Phil, a burn survivor with a disfigured face. Jacob screams, immediately exits the room, and comes across Phil's parents outside the door, who then explain to Jacob how Phil got his scars. Jacob returns back to the room and befriends Phil. Jacob also apologizes for his reaction. Phil admits that it's his fault for coming in without asking for permission. 
In the morning, Jacob meets his other classmates, the twins, Frederick, who has Tourette's syndrome, and Elwood, who has autism. Like Jacob's first reaction, all the other students scream when Phil joins the table. Dr. Sherman comes over to keep the table in order and asks everyone to return to their seats. Later, Christine, the girl Jacob met before, also joins in. Later that day, Dr. Sherman explains the rules while everyone is in the classroom. They are to follow rigorous routines from morning until evening, including Bible reading. Christine is taken aback as her father did not mention this to her. She's under the impression that the place is a hotel. She tries to run away, but Dr. Sherman catches on, reveals the stick hidden from his suit, and nonchalantly hits her with a stick several times. Christine then goes back to her seat, all bruised. Jacob and Frederick are playing catch one day when Christine comes over. They all share how they ended up in the special boarding school. They have different theories as to why. Christine explains that they are not in a regular school, as Dr. Sherman will only be handling them for two weeks, and a regular semester is much longer. In the evening, Phil shares with Jacob his interest in astronomy. He's fascinated by the possibility of life forms somewhere in the vastness of space. Jacob also shares how his father died. Initially, Jacob comes up with the story that his father died in a fire. But after sensing that Phil has been honest with him, Jacob comes clean and tells him that his father did not die because of fire. He just said that, intending to make Phil feel better. The next day, while having a class about the Bible, Christine asks to be excused to pee. Dr. Sherman gives her three minutes and a half, but she returns late. Dr. Sherman then beats her again with a stick. Later, Christine approaches Jacob and says she did not go to the bathroom. Instead, she went to Dr. Sherman's office and found out that Mrs. Sherman was not who she claimed to be. She's using a fake name. Christine teases Jacob again that he's a girl because he refuses to touch her face. Feeling the pressure, Jacob attempts to touch her face, but Mrs. Sherman comes in. She asks them why they are together in the bathroom. Christine explains that she asked Jacob's help as she could not turn the faucet on. That night, Phil tells Jacob that he walks weirdly. Jacob is confused and asks how. Phil then tells him that he walks like a girl, which upsets Jacob. The argument is cut short when they hear a loud banging sound. Jacob goes out to find out what's happening, and the twins join in. It's Elwood banging his head against the wall. He has made a mess of himself. Jacob helps Elwood and takes him to the bathroom to wash, only to discover that Frederick committed suicide by hanging. After the shocking discovery, Dr. Sherman handles the incident by having the school groundkeeper take the body and inform the students that Frederick's body will be taken to the hospital. Dr. Sherman then sends the children back to their rooms. Without the groundkeeper guarding the gate, Christine uses this opportunity to flee the school with Jacob. Jacob tries to pack up, but Christine asks him to go with her right now. Meanwhile, Philip declines the invitation because he prefers to avoid trouble. A bit later, the two unlikely friends go out of the school and head towards the wilderness. But Jacob and Christine didn't expect to see the groundkeeper's car because they thought they'd gone to the hospital. Sensing that they have nowhere to go, they decide to go back and apologize to Dr. Sherman. The next day, Dr. Sherman speaks with Jacob and reveals to him that Frederick did not commit suicide. The doctor also reveals to Jacob why Christine is sent there. It turns out, Christine killed her own brother and then caused her own mother to kill herself due to depression years ago. Dr. Sherman then asks Jacob to help them look after the rest of the students, and Jacob accepts the task. Later, Jacob makes sure that the students are safe, assists them with their needs, and checks on them to ensure they are comfortable in their beds. After tucking in Elwood, Christine then calls his attention. Jacob takes this chance to confront Christine if she kills Frederick. Without hesitation, she admits she did it to create a distraction and escape. Afterward, Christine then asks him to wear his grandmother's dress. When he refuses to do so, she threatens to kill Elwood. Jacob makes Christine promise that she won't kill Elwood if he indulges her. This forces Jacob to give in and starts wearing the dress. Christine then puts some makeup on him. After that, she asks him to dance with her. She grabs a pair of scissors and asks Jacob to turn around. When Jacob faces her again, Christine's hair is cut short. Christine holds Jacob's hand and they start dancing. Suddenly, Christine tries to stab Jacob, but he easily overpowers her. In a crazy twist of events, Christine then confesses that she loves Jacob. She's been in love with him since she first saw him. The only reason why she tries to stab Jacob is that Christine wants him to beat her ass up. She feels pleasure when beaten up. Christine then asks Jacob to stay the night, but Jacob declines. Instead, he invites her over to his room and stares at the Glow Stars stickers with Phil. Jacob wakes up in the middle of the night and finds Christine and Phil fast asleep. After sensing that something is wrong, he checks on Elwood and soon finds out he's been killed in his bed. 
While looking for an answer, he overhears the Shermans discussing what to do next. He also hears that Dr. Sherman addresses Mrs. Sherman with another name. Christine was right. The said Mrs. Sherman admits that she killed Elwood. Jacob then discovers the dead bodies of the real Shermans in the freezer of the basement. Late into the night, Elwood's mom arrives and looks for her son. At the same time, in an effort to hide from the murderous friends, Jacob ends up hiding in a closet. Meanwhile, the fake Dr. Sherman offers Elwood's mom a drink and then tells her that she's late, as he has already fulfilled what he's supposed to do. From there, Jacob realizes that all of them are sent to that boarding school to be killed. Being a hindrance to their respective family in different ways, they were sent to be killed by one of their parents or both. As soon as Elwood's mom feels relieved and stands up to leave, the fake Mrs. Sherman stabs her to death because she fears that she might squeal and reveal the murders. Dr. Sherman calmly expresses his disapproval that Elwood's mom was murdered like that. The doctor reveals to Mrs. Sherman that he had already poisoned Elwood's mom and she would have died in a hotel somewhere. They could have simply waited for the poison to take effect to ensure that the crime would not be associated with them. Now that she's been killed, she will be reported as a missing person, and in the process, the authorities will look for her. This will put their boarding school in jeopardy. Dr. Sherman can't afford to let this happen. He's been doing this for a long time, and he can't allow a lousy worker to commit a mistake like that. And so, Dr. Sherman slits the throat of Mrs. Sherman and then calls the groundkeeper to come over and help him sort things out. After the brief phone call, Dr. Sherman asks Jacob to come out. He knows he's been hiding in the closet all along. The doctor then confesses that he's been contract killing since he was young. He then asks Jacob to help carry Mrs. Sherman's body. After a brief exchange on how the doctor plans to burn the school along with everyone else, Jacob asks for Dr. Sherman's real identity. But before the doctor can answer, the groundkeeper knocks on the door. Jacob meets the groundkeeper at the door and guides him inside. The groundkeeper is shocked to see blood all over and the dead body of Mrs. Sherman. He is about to ask what happened when Dr. Sherman attacks him from the back and kills him. The groundkeeper is dragged near a cabinet. Dr. Sherman then purposely knocks the cabinet over to ensure that the groundkeeper's head is crushed. Dr. Sherman admits that Jacob's stepfather reached a deal with him to get rid of Jacob. His contract with Jacob's stepdad is for Jacob never to return home, and his mother has no idea about it. Jacob didn't expect that it was his stepdad because he was always friendly and understanding with him. After realizing his fate, Jacob asks to be Dr. Sherman's assistant. They then work together to position the dead bodies all over the place. Dr. Sherman's plan is to burn the place down and make it look like nobody survived. Dr. Sherman begins to start a fire. He asks Jacob to lock the doors upstairs to prevent the other children from coming out and escaping. As soon as the doctor hands over the key, Jacob, who has a knife kitten, stabs his forehead and bludgeons Dr. Sherman to death. Dr. Sherman begs for his life, but Jacob is determined to finish the job. Christine sees the murder, but Jacob explains that the doctor will kill them all. He then asks her to check the others, as the place burns down. Later, Jacob and Christine guide the other children where to safely go out. He then tricks Christine into going with him to another room to help him. She has no idea what's waiting for her. As soon as Christine gets in, he then locks the door. Christine begs Jacob to open the door, but he's determined to burn the place with Christine in it. He then tells Christine that she needs to die because she killed Frederick. Jacob then walks away despite her pleas, gets naked, and exits the burning building to reunite with the rest of the students. The survivors are then fetched by their families. Jacob warns Phil's father that if something happens to Phil, he'd be in trouble as he knows why they sent Phil to that place. Phil's father can only look at him in shock and disbelief. A bit later, Jacob is reunited with his mother and stepdad. During dinner, stepdad tells Jacob that he has already reached out to the school and that they are willing to take him back. Stepdad is not aware that Jacob has already found out what he did. On the other hand, mother wants him to take a vacation with them to Paris, but Jacob shows little interest. He knows that his stepfather lied to his mom and sent him to that boarding school to be murdered. His mother then wonders why he has not touched his food, despite helping her prepare the food earlier. Jacob explains that he's not hungry and then asks to be excused. Jacob goes to his room. This time, he's not afraid of the dark anymore. Moments later, he can hear his mom screaming. He's not surprised because it was he who poisoned stepdad by spiking his wine during dinner. Jacob used the same poison that Dr. Sherman poured on Elwood's mom. He then taints his lips with blood, mirroring what her grandmother did when she used her sharpened fangs as a weapon to kill a Nazi soldier who kept humiliating her during the wartime. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.